Sun in Taurus. All right, so this is, we actually have a lot of Taurus transits either beginning or wrapping up during this lunar cycle. And either way, that's a really beautiful thing. I mean, I know it's not necessarily the most Taurian thing to appreciate change, but it is nice to have energies that are the next step. It's, it's kind of intense when the solar system has a lot of energies that are conjunct your natal sun because new beginnings are happening and also it's the resolution of, of previous new beginnings that are wrapping up their cycle so it's nice that some energies are moving forward it's not going to be a little it's it's things will be able to grow you've planted a lot of seeds over the last lunar cycle and now it's time to see them grow especially the, actually the last lunar cycle and the one before that because venus was in taurus too and that's your ruling planet and that just that energy is all about planting seeds and in a variety of ways <laughs> but it's going to be really nice to be able to to see things through to completion at least for the beginning stages and for them to start blossoming from there on out so one of the biggest things we'll, we'll focus on the microcosmic view in a moment but the macrocosmic view is uranus and taurus this we've talked about this in previous uh new moon new cycles this is a really big deal for uranus to go into your sun sign it's intense but it's also really helpful. It's really beautiful. It allows you to grow exponentially and very quickly too. Now, because Uranus and Taurus is a, a difficult energy in some ways, it's known as a fall energy. As I've said in a, actually a video I just previously posted, but I've said this for years, ever since I started studying astrology, there is no such thing as a bad energy, a negative energy. Ultimately, all of the energies are essential. They're important. It doesn't matter if it's in dignity or detriment or whatever. We need them all to be balanced and to have every single kind of mode of thinking and feeling and being and acting and actions i mean not acting but like in the form of actions and and inter interactions and we need all these different energies so bear that in mind when i do say that uranus and taurus is a little bit tough and what this means is this energy resists change so uranus is all about change growth it uh it rules Aquarius and so no doubt you've met a few Aquarians who are really nice and really helpful and really cool but then other Aquarians that are really wild and unstable and erratic and those people are like get the fuck away from me like you're gonna hurt me or hurt those I love or hurt what I love like no you're not good for my stability and for a Taurus that's essential if you're not good for stability time to shed and I think that's really the key thing to keep in mind the mantra here with Uranus and Taurus and it can be tough because sometimes things that were stable before are going to become unstable and this could be a relationship no need to fear no need to fear again this is an eight-year transit and ultimately it is all coming to a higher manifestation it is all growing so even if things get shaky it's not like the universe is trying to pick on you it's not like you know it's like oh it's your time to experience a really shitty time no these all ha all these things happen for a reason so whether it's a relationship or a job or a belief system or a mindset or it could be really anything because uranus is such a it, it's such a broad energy it connects with so many different things in our lives it really comes down to whatever it is or who it is or where it is if something is not serving your highest interest in your evolution in your growth in your ability to experience to give and receive love and affection and appreciation and stability and finances and prosperity and wealth and all of the good things that life has to offer then let those things go let those people go let that place go let whatever it is go uranus and taurus is an eight-year transit so it's not like you have to figure all this stuff out now you're gonna have eight years of uranus going like kind of mini earthquakes like is it stable is it stable is it stable okay it's stable okay is it stable <laughs> you know and it can get annoying it's like what what is fucking solid around here well we got to keep something in mind and this is going to be something that's really helpful it goes back to buddhist thought is ultimately everything is change and getting attached to something that is not changing which of course is impossible but our attachments are based off of an illusion or a wish for lack of change and that's where suffering comes from when we don't just roll with the punches and change it's like well I gotta get older, you know, I'm living, I, I have to, what does this mean? It means, you know, maybe I'm not quite as, as sexually, uh, you know, attractive as I was when I was 20, but is that a bad thing? 
I mean, obviously, we're all going to be, and so much more than just being sexually attractive or whatever, but ultimately, we're going to find a deeper sense of love and sex as we get older. We're going to find a deeper sense of how much money really is or isn't important as we get older because we get rid of once, you know, I want 10 jet skis. Hmm, you know, a couple of years later, you start to go, uh, actually, I don't really need that. I really just need this. I need maybe one jet ski. That'd be cool awesome you know and a boat that's cool or hey fuck all that all together i really want to have a stable savings so i can just enjoy time with those i love and not get so focused on possessions whatever it is and for each tourist it's going to be different just like when uranus was going into aries and as it goes into gemini my sign later on it's going to be different for every single individual and that's true for any transit actually not just uranus so Focus on what you need. Let go of what you want. Let go of what you don't need. Change. Allow the change to happen. And you're going to be set up beautifully, not just during this time, but for the time after that too. And mourn the loss. You know, there's no need to not grieve. No need to, I mean, if you need to cry, it's like, fuck, I, I really love this person and things have changed. It just doesn't seem to be working. Cry. That's a part of the process, okay? But recognize that it's not working it's a beautiful revelation and you are going to find ways to make it work especially over the next two years because saturn's going to be in capricorn and so that's a beautiful trine energy saturn is saying hey let's not only is uranus shaking stuff stuff up but saturn's saying let's focus on what works let's get rid of what doesn't let's cut it and that's a beautiful thing it's really essential especially for earth energy especially for earth energy because earth energy likes to amass and get more and get more and get more we don't need that much. We really don't need that much. When it comes to the, the body, we don't need that much. You know, I mean, obviously we need, we need to take, take very good care of those needs, but we need to not overeat. We need to not overindulge. We need to not, you know. And so Uranus and Taurus is going to be helpful for understanding, okay, what, what do I need to get rid of in my life? What do I need to, what, what do I need? That's it. So, okay, that's the macrocosmic view. Um, now, we also have Mercury in Taurus going into Mercury Gemini Tuesday, May 29th, and we have Sun in Taurus going into Sun in Gemini Sunday, May 20th. So, what this means is shortly after the beginning of this lunar cycle, the Sun moves on from your energy, your birthday month, into Gemini. So, this is nice for a lot of reasons. You know, it's nice to have our birthday month, but eventually time's got to move on. We have to, you know, you'll have another one next year, I promise, and then one, another one the year after that, another one, the, nobody can take that from you. Um, and so what's really cool is is now everything that you've been thinking about and, and focusing on over this last lunar cycle is now, and that for those birthday wishes, or maybe just one or whatever, uh, it's going to start growing. You're going to start finding new ideas to build on the seeds that you're planting, or rather to water the seeds that you're planting and take care of them. And to be able to find other people to help you, other people to, to say, oh, I love, I would love to see an orange tree here. Absolutely, I love that seed. And of course, that's a metaphor for maybe uh, a new career option that you have, a new relationship, a so many things. Something else that's happening here is we have Jupiter and Scorpio. Now, Mr. or Miss Taurus, or if you identify other than gender, that's fine. My Taurian friend and sibling. We have a lot of intense stuff going on this year. We've already talked about Uranus. We've already talked about Saturn. Jupiter is in Scorpio and it's opposite your sun. We've talked about this in previous New Moon News editions. What this means, especially since Jupiter is retrograde, is this is a year of completely transforming yourself in a lot of ways. This could mean, again, letting go of a job that no longer serves you. Uh, letting go of a person or a relationship that no longer serves you. It means being able to grow past any barriers that you set for yourself before. Now that's a scary process, but it's an important process and one that we all have to do. But especially as a Taurus, that's one of the biggest challenges of being a Taurus is getting stuck in inertia. It's like, okay, you know, time goes on, time has gone, and I'm getting, my growth is slowing, my growth is slowing, my routine, and now I'm stuck. That's where Jupiter and Scorpio comes around and says, all right, motherfucker, I'm going to get you out of there. I'm going to dig you out. And it's tough. It's like, whoa, wait, no, but I'm comfortable. Yeah, but everything's dying around you. Not necessarily in every case. I don't want you to be freaked out like, what the fuck, everything's dying? No, no, no. But it's good to keep in mind that there is a need to be able to grow eternally. We all have that need to grow. 
And that's what Jupiter and Scorpio is all about. And so if you if you find that, that your environment is decaying or you find within yourself, your heart or your mind or your body or your you feel like your spirit is decaying, then it's time to go through a rebirth. It's time to move to a new place, to do something different with your life, to change your beliefs or at least be open to see what other beliefs are out there, what other ways of understanding the world is out there. It's... It's essential, and this last lunar cycle has been intense in a lot of ways because you've had Jupiter and Scorpio opposite that Sun and that Mercury in Taurus, and now it's opposite Uranus in Taurus. Um, again, this is a slow transit. It takes about a year, but Jupiter is about halfway through this transit. So if anything, I always say, we don't need to have a deadline and be freaked out about, oh, I have to figure it out before November 8th when Jupiter moves on in the Sag. We don't need to freak out, but we don't need to take things for granted either. We need to understand, okay, I don't need to rush the transformation. I don't, I don't need to rush the growth because that's not good either. However, I do need to make the most of this. I can't say, eh, it'll be there next year because it's not. It's not going to be there next year, okay? So Jupiter and Scorpio is going to be a factor in our lives uh, for the next about five months, just about five months. And, um, no, 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 I'm sorry, uh, seven months. No, that's not right either. Um, uh, <laughs> six months. Okay, got it, six months. Now, of course, we have future Jupiter and Scorpio transits. It's just another cycle. So in 12 years, we'll have another one. But do you really want to stagnate for 12 years? I know it's not the most pleasant thing to go through a rebirth and let go of of things but if they're not serving you then it really can be an amazing experience even though it's like oh I'm, I don't know what it's like to do this I haven't done this in so long whatever this is as long as you need it as long as you need that growth follow that feeling and allow yourself to try something new as long as if it, as it feel if it feels right and it makes sense on some level go with it and see where it goes Especially since Mars will be in Aquarius over the next, uh, well, five, like, five months, um, which is huge. It usually takes about six weeks or a month and a half. It's going to be in Aquarius for about five months until November, what is it, November 15th of this year. So Mars is also kind of shocking you of saying, hey, grow, learn, learn. I'm going to be able to expose you to people that will be able to help you take things to that next level. This is a year that is can, it can be a little bit unsettling, but... It is a year that will give you so much in return. So much in return. So, so much in return. Okay? So, enjoy this next lunar cycle on the microcosmic view. It's fun. It's flirty. It's witty. It's You can learn a lot. But on the macrocosmic view, you are being encouraged greatly encouraged to change and to grow sometimes it will show up in a way that doesn't feel like it's encouraging at all it feels painful it feels scary it feels difficult but face the facts move one step at a time and keep breathing keep breathing it's just another transit and we continue to grow and we continue to blossom and we continue to move on and in ways that we never could have foreseen before remember that Remember the past when there were certain changes that happened in your life that you thought you were never going to survive, and you're still here. And look at all the good stuff that came from that. So one last thing is Venus goes into Cancer Saturday, May 19th. That's going to be a really helpful transit, so your interactions with others stay close to those, your loved ones. To, uh, it's from May 19th to basically the end of this lunar cycle, Wednesday, June 13th. It's going to be a time to stay with loved ones, be around them. Um, build your home base that's going to be your big focus and enjoy those seeds that you planted in the last two months especially two months ago with that lunar cycle and refer back to that if you need to the uh, new moon news four that time is now starting to burgeon starting to blossom those seeds are coming up and you're, you're seeing some beautiful flowers especially in your loved ones and those around you so enjoy infinite love to you my friend you got this the change is for the better if it feels right and if it makes sense. And if it doesn't quite make sense, try and learn some new stuff. Maybe it'll start to make sense more. That's where that Mars and Aquarius comes in and says, hey, why don't you learn something from somebody? And again, astrologers, that's what we're here for. We're here to help. So feel free to contact me if you'd like a reading. Try to figure out, okay, what is it that I'm trying to grow in my life? How am I trying to change? And what can I do to make that process as smooth and as enjoyable as possible? Contact me. My email is williamharrison at live.com and my Facebook page is Will Harrison Metaphysician. 
Namaste, my friend.